And you see, I have been sitting in this third row seat the whole time. I am on Red Bull and that's the only reason why I'm alive and making the video. Is this going to replace Palisade? Is it big enough? No. <laughs> This rather is a very brand new format that I've never tried before. Well, first of all, I have another 2024 Hyundai all new Santa Fe on my background in terracotta orange, which is the signatory color of the Santa Fe. I think I've driven the car for about 900 kilometers. Throughout all that time, I have been sitting, of course, in the driver's seat, driving the car around. All this time, when I was going over and reviewing the car, I've been telling you about how spacious the third row seat is. And I came up with this video to tell you what it really feels like to be in the third row seats for an adult and I came up with this bullet list I literally have driven this car from the dawn to sunrise two times already I have driven this car from Seoul and all the way down to Busan and the other way around coming up so I have a very good idea I can confidently say what the ride is how this car drives and feels and I also have driven this car under pouring rain and foggy condition. I came up with three categories in total. First is noise, second is drive, and third is the comfort. And I put together some of the questions that I've been having throughout videos and reviews on this 2024 Santa Fe. I have a thorough review of this car inside out and also the POV test drive with this car. So feel free to check out my previous video in the channel. So let me get to this very conclusive point that I really want to share with you first of all noise and I have whole bullet points here so I am actually sitting on the third row seat and I want to spend some time here so I can tell you what it really feels like that being said you know what I think it's fair for me to pull the seat up right obstructed by the front row seat can I pull you up please I don't want to get out I can do it I can do it Yes, I can. <laughs> there we go. I think it will only be a fair game if I will have the second seats. So this is the worst position that you can actually get sitting on the third row seats. So I will actually have it on this angle as I go through the noise. So we'll see what that feels like. Let me also put on the seat belt. I just want to leave it open because I really like that view with the terracotta orange Santa Fe on the background. First and foremost, there are a lot of things and technology put behind the Santa Fe that reduces noise and all. The most important thing when it comes to the noise, I would definitely say, what do you think? Tires. Depending on the compound and how the tires are made, what it's made of, really makes a day and night difference, not only to the drive comfort itself, but also largely has to do with the noise as well. I made this to be the number one because this 2024 all new Santa Fe gets a Pirelli tires. So it was mostly Michelin all throughout. Primacy Tour, those were the tires that we saw on Hyundai SUV thus far. This Santa Fe we see a Pirelli Scorpion it has what's called PNCS which stands for Pirelli Noise Cancelling System. I got this straight from their website saying that PNCS reduces noise by between 2 or 3 decibels which on average reduces the perceived noise by half. This is the paragraph straight from their website. So that is a one remarkable technology that is also written on the tire. So that plays a key role when it comes to the noise. If you have watched my previous um, test drive video, you probably recall that I was really blown away by how quiet the Santa Fe was. Oh my God. I pointed that out when the car was at a complete stop as well. So that doesn't have to do with the tire. You see there's a truck. How do I And we can't hear it. What does that leave us? It comes with those acoustic glasses applied on the Santa Fe. Both 
front and second row seats. So they got the double pane windows on the both rows. It also comes with the safety window. If you get your finger arm stuck in between your windows, that happens a lot with children and kids, right? So I tested it out myself. Test it out myself. If you get your arm stuck, look at that. I actually stuck my hand in and it didn't hurt me at all. I know on the video it looks like the window is kind of squeezing my arm. I mean it does but it only just like briefly touched my arm and that was it. So it didn't hurt me at all. Going back to the acoustic windows first and second row and plus of course the main the front windshield so that is another key major factor when it comes to the noise it has to do with the interior this alcantara like suede this material absorbs a lot of sound and noise coming into the cabin when you take a close look at the wheelhouse there are sound absorbing wheelhouse covers top-notch grades for sound absorbing materials on top of the wheelhouse so kind of tight together with the noise I want to point out is phone when you are talking on the phone hooked up with the blue link inside loud and clear and vivid even on the freeway going fast speed inside a tunnel which is like the worst condition for making a phone call right so my wife Dima she was just picking up the sound no problem whatsoever so that is about it for the noise I just noticed I was actually testing out the third row seat, right? I am 176 centimeters tall and I weigh about 82 kilograms. So the second row seat was actually tilted all the way. It's just the tilt that it was at. It is not actually slid all the way back. So let me make it more realistic now. So this is about the second row seat angle you would get, especially when you have somebody sitting on the third row seat, right? However, this is more like there we go. So this would be more realistic sitting position for the second row seat and also somebody sitting on the third row seat. I'll go back to the seat again and this time, so let me put the seat belt back on again and if I pull this up, is it going to cover? Yep. So it is going to cover the Sanafe on the back so I, just, I want to leave it that way. Moving on to the second point which is the drive. 2024 all new Santa Fe gets HDA2 and LFA2 highway driving assist and lane following assist in the order. The LFA2 is the first in its Hyundai SUV follows the vehicle in the front. If it's a little bit confused or there is less information about the road condition itself, Santa Fe will do its best to follow and chase after the car in the front. Just like like some of the other manufacturers out in the market have been doing. Santa Fe does a great job with that. I again have driven this car over 900 kilometers and mostly on the freeway which was just really really great. LFA2 it also works on corners and I tested it out one of the severe turns and corners a highway exit. I'm including that video right now and it almost made its way until the exit but it kind of lost it at the end i really hope it would make it but that is a huge upgrade and difference this is some that is something that uh, lfa1 could just never ever do before another plus is the hda2 when you have the highway driving assist on when you are using the hda you could actually use everything that the paddle shifters have got to offer meaning you can downshift your car and you can upshift your car if you need and if you downshift your car of course it's going to use more rpm hence providing more torque if you need and if you want the car to have more torque you can do so even when you are using the hda just by pushing the downshift pedal shifter on the left and having said that this car has the eight speed wet dual clutch transmission meaning that this is based on a manual transmission that's what dcts are made of that being said the car often actually rolled backwards when you didn't apply the accelerator as quick there is epb to have the car at a standstill position sometimes the logic would miss it out briefly and I did feel rolls uphill or downhill from time to time when I was trying to reverse the car back up and so forth. 
again including the video right now that didn't happen all that much but it would be really nice for you to understand the nature of the DCT especially this 8-speed wet DCT it's a completely different transmission to that of the 8-speed automatic one my favor one over the other I definitely favor the 8-speed wet DCT this has which was also on my Veloster and DCT I think it's one of the best transmissions that Hyundai Motor Group has made thus far I'm not going to cover it in this video but feel free to Google YouTube look up what DCTs are made of what they are like probably then would have better understanding and feel the whole nature of what's happening being between your drives so there is a little bit of rolling uphill and downhill in between changing from the foot brake to the accelerator just keep that in mind or just press the foot brake again and engage the auto hold and we're good to go last point on the drive it's about that keep your hands on the steering wheel 2024 Santa Fe gets HOD which stands for hands-on detection so unlike the previous model where they had a torque based steering wheel feedback system HOD hands-on detection actually literally detects your hand on the steering wheel based on the touch sensitive it's not going to work with a single finger one one finger is not enough for the steering wheel to detect but starting with two it will detect your fingers your hands on the steering wheel but the column in the middle where it's made of the plastic so over there I actually use kind of a water bottle and push the steering wheel to see if it gets the torque feedback as well and it did and I found that out because I actually did the orange test or water bottle test as well some of you guys probably know if you are an early stage autonomous autopilot driver who's been enjoying the tech there has been this little gimmick where you could just stick your orange inside a steering wheel or water bottle those alert messages asking you to put your hands on the steering wheel would just never pop up the next one left which is the comfort and before I do that I think it's now a good time for me to fold the second rear seat and kind of just give you the beautiful background view I have here today sitting on the third row seat for past I think it's already been like 15 minutes at least right one thing I would like to point out is that it would be nice if I was able to tuck feet underneath the seat and I can to some extent I can actually one-fifth of my shoe underneath the seat so it's not completely blocked so it kind of gives you extra leg room that way now the second row seats are completely folded and I am back in the third row seat like this I can put my feet underneath the second row seat much easier with the seats folded because of the extra space underneath but it wasn't like this when it was upright it's really about the headroom massive headroom that no other competitors out in the current market can provide is definitely a huge plus and of course the window as well I get just so much visibility and view throughout this window and also I have AC vents exclusively to myself you can also control the rear AC on the right side over here as well nice little C charging ports as you can see I've been charging my phone like that and there is also the 220 volts which probably is meant to be used from the trunk side however it's there the third row seats not going to exaggerate and tell you this is like the best seat ever no it is still the third row seat so the way it feels it still is completely flat seat as you can see but just look at how high the headrest actually extend to again thanks to the box the box shape of this Santa Fe this is has been made possible and even an adult look at this easily can be set on the third row seat so a little child kids they wouldn't really have any problem sitting on the third row seat and traveling a little bit of a long distance drives and we can see that there are ISO fixes here on the third row seat and on this side as well yep so there are ISO fixes on the third row seat too and also the second row seat gets it right here this one as well too so ISO fix here 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 so you can have four keep forgetting it 
got to fold this guy. I want to give you the terracotta orange Santa Fe. It really boils down to the headroom that the Santa Fe provides and I think that is just game changer for sure and I think it will be something worth mentioning and worth pointing out that this will be one of the best thing that the Santa Fe has got to offer. Especially when you are in a situation where you have people sitting on the third row seat on and off. So the last point, as I have told you, is the comfort. Throughout the course of driving this car for over 900 kilometers under many different weather conditions, that digital center mirror has been nothing but a joy. It's been fantastic. I thought it was just a rear view mirror turned digital, but it wasn't that at all. It actually provides much more view than a traditional conventional rear view mirror. I could see cars that I couldn't see with regular rear view mirror. I'm not joking. Probably it has to do with the angle for the digital center mirror. The camera is attached right next to the top third brake light. Over there it has the wide lens which provides much more view and we can also control the levels the brightness too so don't don't worry about it. This, you really just have to feel it for yourself. If you can get the digital center mirror, trust me, add it to your Santa Fe. And also, Sorento gets this too, so just get it on your Sorento. Or just get it on all of the Hyundai Motor Group cars if possible. It really makes a day and night difference. And if you could provide a single accident from that, alone you just saved your money and you get your money back the investment that you already made on the digital center mirror speaking of that i want to briefly mention about the built-in cam 2.0 so this is just literally the onboard camera which faces both front and rear but the best part is that it has the audio you can download it and check it instantly real time using your smartphone application so that's another huge plus when it started raining heavy it was really clear and vivid for a first few minutes but then when the water got there probably has to do with the vortex generated from the rear and so forth i actually had rain droplet was kind of covering up the camera somewhat i was worried it's going to stay that way but after a few minutes a couple minutes it kind of dried out i don't know if it just evaporated or dried out or it just kind of got carried out, carried away i have no idea but that clear view came back after a few couple of minutes so don't worry about it the comfort we're talking about the comfort the best technology when it comes to the comfort is of course that ergo motion seat which is only applied to the driver's seat unfortunately but the second row seat also gets a relaxation seat which actually would provide you the best sitting position for you to just relax on the passenger seat my wife Dima has she's been loving it my mother also tried it out she loved it and so did my sister she loved it too and my Myself as well I briefly tried it out it's just one of those um, zero gravity seats that Hyundai Motor Group has been giving us this Santa Fe gets a suspension setup that reacts to the frequency therefore the suspension can actually travel longer further therefore securing more of the ride quality when going over speed bumps and whatnot where the longer stroke is actually needed and I could feel that throughout the test drives the hydro bushing that has been used it was also on the very last santa fe one before this one but still is applied here hyundai has been using it a lot also kona got the hydro bushing too what hydro bushing is is it's not just the rubber itself but it has the liquids inside that will further enhance the role of bushings so that's it my overall conclusion points i really wanted to give you and share with you after driving 900 kilometers for the past week i can assure you all the points i have shared with you is not biased it's not my personal preference or any sort this is very objective i actually have been going over and over about this time measurement as to how long it would take for the hda system to get cancelled if you don't hold your steering wheel well the first chime first alert will pop around 10 to 12 seconds i've tried it several times i couldn't really pinpoint the exact seconds there but it was somewhere in between the 10 to 12 seconds so that will be the first warning and if you ignore that it will now turn into that red warning 
where it has the shorter chime asking you to hold on to the steering wheel in about 25 to 26 seconds i was really close on this one so first is to 10 to 12 seconds the second warning will start after about 25 to 26 seconds and after 50 or 51 seconds so i just want to say 10 25 and 50 here so after 50 to 51 seconds the hda will actually turn off so it's not going to emergency brake stop your vehicle the lane keeping assist the lane following assist will just automatically turn off and the car will start decelerating on that point on because it's not accelerating right so don't worry about it all too much and of course you want to have your hand on the steering wheel it's not autonomous level four or autonomous level three it's just still a driving aid but it's not an autonomous drive yet this is something that we have to live with for the time being so that's it um, I have few questions here I have listed which I want to quickly go over and I have a feeling that this will be last video on Santa Fe just so I want to cover everything here so bear with me if there is Santa Fe HEV available I might make another video but <laughs> that's this is all I have at the moment so is there a spare tire there is no spare tire for domestic models I can tell you that it's been that way for quite some time now with all of Hyundai Motor Group cars including Kia Sorento so it only comes with a uh, emergency puncture kit underneath this cargo space right here i actually looked underneath the car and there is a huge empty lot put aside the differentials for the all-wheel drive model and so forth so there might be a slim chance that spare tire might be attached underneath but again i can't really guarantee you anything so that might differ from a country to another but i can tell you that for domestic korean spec models there is no spare tire the rolling on this car is just nothing but a charm this if it wasn't for that i would certainly have had most difficult time driving the car back and forth Seoul and Busan. I actually pulled an all-nighter. Probably you could see it from my face or the way I am behaving, perhaps. I did, I had to because I have. I had to return the car super early in the morning. So pull an all-nighter, I am, I am on Red Bull and that's the only reason why I'm alive and making the video. But thanks to the ride quality, the comfort it provided, especially on the roll part santa fe did a beautiful job with the roll if you saw my test drive video you probably saw how amazed blown away i was when i was first testing out the roll the drive quality on the santa fe is just beautiful i really hope that you would give this car a test drive and feel it for yourself the mpg i will include the screenshot of the video right now overall the mixed fuel efficiency was around 10 kilometers per liter that is including literally everything just flooring heavy acceleration heavy brakes a lot of frequent acceleration and deceleration which i do with my test drives so please keep that in mind overall fuel efficiency in economy would easily go up more than 10 kilometers per liter if you are careful about it turn off wireless okay so you can actually turn the wireless charging pads off in the system somebody asked me about this question first i thought it wasn't possible but it is it is inside and you can even decide which pads you want to turn off number one or number two or both and because i kind of thought the same thing often you place you know water bottle or the drinks and where you can get easily get some water over there in the center console and i was worried about how that would affect the wireless charging system because you know water is never good with electronics but thanks to the system you can turn it off he or she is really sensitive to that wireless charging pad or maybe that high frequency noise it might make which i have no idea about but good news you can turn it off and turn it on navigation infotainment system has been changed so this would be probably the same for all the ota backed up cars out there on the lowest rectangle where it was telling you the directions of your next 
merging points or exits. The next one was always at the bottom, but when you are on a freeway, it's not like that anymore. It would actually tell you about the rest or the service area it said on the navigation. I didn't know that. And I found out the hard way I actually had to make a important exit which I missed out because I thought it was the bottom one that I need to be looking at but I found out the hard way and that's so that is the re only reason why I am including it that UVC sanitization runs for 10 minutes and I measure that myself because I had just so much time and I just wanted to point out everything that UVC sanitization operates for 10 full minutes if you tap on that button and this trunk is literally a shelter as the designer pointed out and it's much more further longer than a traditional trunk i actually have made a back-to-back -back comparison to that of the kia sorrento also check that video out but uh, it's much much more longer i want to say at least about a foot size and i actually had to walk away to Feet. I'm not saying the measurement but I'm literally using my feet here but I actually had my two feet away how far it was out compared to Sorrento having said that when you put your car in reverse it will also show you with a guideline uh, where and how how much space you need before hitting your trunk when you open it up it is showed with the dotted the broken lines in blue so if you see those um, put together that's uh, where you want to watch out for so don't get any closer than that the trunk is huge and large is this going to replace palisade is it big enough no <laughs> i actually have shot a video with the santa fe and the palisade back to back so check it all out over there on that video but it's as simple as that this 2024 santa fe certainly got bigger than the predecessor however it still is santa fe or i should say palisade is still the king of it all palisade is palisade comparing this to that of the current palisade still palisade is much bigger and same goes for this quarter glass too i thought santa fe was like one of the largest but just looking at it back and forth back to back palisade had actually bigger quarter glass on this um, d pillar too so i really like the fact that after a an hour of driving that lumbar stabilization system operated on its own when i just missed out that ergo motion seat which only lasts for 20 minutes at the longest in your settings that you can change i forgot about the massage seat but that lumbar stabilization system just came up automatically and kind of relaxed my and supported my lumbar that way a huge plus on that especially for a long distance drives and last but at least the two charging pads that santa fe bragged a lot about the best part was that i just like anybody would right these days you get inside your car you throw your phone in the center or wherever you can and uh, probably the car key right so that is with me how many times have you actually placed your smartphone in your wireless charging pad and it wasn't charging because you didn't precisely put your phone in that never happened with santa fe i would just simply just throw literally my phone in the center console because there is that's the best place i can do so right then i'm like oh shoot i have to charge my phone i would look at my phone it's charging it's been like that 100 percent i did not intend on charging my phone i was just placing my phone in the wireless charging pad zone but thanks to the wide charging pad and also that bracket in the middle and also the way it's been designed probably and i'm pretty sure the designers have tested it out for themselves and saw came up with the best combination that way so a huge plus on that one certainly all right so that's it for today's video going over the points and uh, what i have felt just driving it over 900 kilometers for the past week these are the points that i want to share and point out with you all hopefully these points will help you with uh, some of the decision that you might be having if you have torn decision between santa fe and sorrento which is a direct competitor i have a video on them 
so also feel free to check it out mostly you'll find your answers watching my previous videos on Santa Fe and Sorrento time permitting feel free to check them out I have a lot of detail and information over there as well and you see I have been sitting in this third row seat the whole time and I can't really complain about it I I don't think I would complain at all about the third row seat again thanks to the headroom this is all about the headroom that contributes to what I am feeling right now because it's essentially the same as Sorrento's and many other SUVs flat seat on the third row you know you know but this headroom it really plays a huge difference all right so that really is it i'm sorry if i was kind of falling asleep i have been awake for over 24 hours now so um i just had to make this video before i return the santa fe so that's it for today's video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and like cars in korea if you did and i'll see you in the next video bye just like Dima said like i would really want this Santa Fe for my family SUV should I get one I don't have the best charging services and infrastructure at the moment where I live so the EVs are not precisely the perfect car for me at the moment so this ice internal combustion engine and also this 2.5 turbo it's just a great great match and also along with that eight speed um dct all right i just I, I i really gotta go i gotta return this car and i'll see you in the next video bye bye so push this button right here you can probably see, can't see it but push it here and the seat is going to do this and i can easily get out